Hi there, this is Bob from CenturyAutoAir.com. Today's compressor, we're going to replace the front seal of a Sandin 709. It's very similar to a 508. They're a one-piece seal. They use these a lot in Dodge trucks that get these mystery leaks you can't find. It's quite often the shaft seal. Uh, you can refer to our video on replacing the GM clutches for a little bit more detailed explanation of getting the clutch off. However, you will need to remove the three pieces of the clutch the front hub plate, which is splined and should pull right off, uh, two or three jaw puller to pull off the pulley and the coil, which leaves us with the compressor. They will leak from the front seal as well as this head plate seal. Uh, there are special tools to remove the front seal, however, most people are not going to have them, so we are going to do a little bit longer process of getting it out that you can do at home. So we start by taking the front head plate loose. Uh, wise idea to make a couple reference marks so that you know how it goes back together. And quickly disassemble. The plate is now loose to expose the O-ring underneath. Grab the front of it, gently lift off. You want to hold all that together so it doesn't fall apart. Try to keep that in camera for you. O-ring that sits in this group right here will either be a flat cut or round cut. Uh, older ones were generally the square cut O-rings. The newer ones are the rounded type. So if it's still in there, you just pick it out. Next, we want to get our front seal out of the, the nose housing. Simply push out the driver assembly and keeping track of your bearings, lay them in order for easy reassembly. That will expose the front seal. There is a dust cover that pops out and then we want to remove the snap ring. Uh, snap ring pliers, not necessary. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. And out. now see the seal is down in the center there. The easiest way to get it out is to drive it out. Once again, there is a puller tool to do that without removing this. Hard to find. Probably not going to have one, so let's just show you a way that you can do it home. Get right behind the seal with screwdriver, tap it out, there's your seal. Being as clean as you can, Wipe everything out, try not to get lint, look for any corrosion in there. We're just doing this as a quick setup, so we're not going to be as clean as we should. Next thing is you take your shaft assembly and you will notice that there may be some scarring or wear from the seal itself. You can take a little scotch Brite pad or some fine emery cloth, wipe it a little bit. You want a clean, perfectly smooth surface to keep that seal. Next, we're going to prepare our new seal for installation. Uh, different types. That's the early type, which has an extractor ring on it and just a single O-ring. A lot of the new replacement types will be a molded seal with a spacer to go into it. Okay, for reassembly, keep track of your parts. Make sure they all go back in the right spot. This is shim sits right on the back side it falls off and you can't figure out where it went that's where it went put a little oil underneath it so it sticks on there nicely make sure it rotates ready to assemble bring your compressor next is the o-ring it's an earlier one once again it's going to be a square cut o-ring if it's the newer style it'll be round it should sit right in that gap but if it doesn't Give it just a little bit of a stretch because if it pops up out of there when you're bolting it together, it will cut and leak. Take your front head plate, noting your marks from earlier, which direction to put it. Set it down. You will notice it does not sit flush. It wants to sit tilted. It's because of the angle of the crankshaft. Go ahead and start your front head plate screws. We are not going to put them all in right now for the sake of the video because you don't need to watch me tighten six screws up 
Just going to tighten a couple down. Torque, normally about 23 inch pounds, or just tight. This is not a real critical tightness on these. Tighten it down, and it will pull itself down flush. Go slowly. If it binds, stop. There's something not right. Sometimes that head plate will shift a little aside, it won't go together, and you got to kind of tap it back a little bit. Keeping track, looking in there, making sure that O ring did not pop, pop out of the gap and cut. So, assuming these are all tight now, we can install our seal. Take our seal installation tool. This is a must tool. You cannot install a seal without tearing it without this. The easiest way to do it is take it, put plenty of oil on it, take your new seal, and actually you're running this seal over the installer backwards to kind of pre stretch it. Set it down, tilt it, work it down over there, and now you've stretched that seal a little bit so it'll fit better. Bring back our compressor. put our seal protector over the shaft. Now this being the newer type seal, it's going to have this spacer. The spacer goes in first. You just tap it down to where it sits in their level. If it's the older style seal, there's no spacer, you don't need it. Once again, a little more oil, wearing latex gloves so that you do not get lint or oil, skin oils on these. You don't want to uh, damage the seal at all during installation. The bowed out part goes to the inside of the compressor. That is the outside. Work the seal over. Push down. Holding on the installation tool. Very carefully. You need to get the seal past this. If you have a nice sleeve, they'll sit down over it, push it down great. If not, very gently with a screwdriver. Work it down just a little bit until you see that the seal has cleared the protector. Remove the protector. I take a, a socket and push the seal down to where it sits flush. Snap ring pliers. Install the snap ring. Now one trick about snap rings, if you look, there's a natural bevel on one side. The other side will be flat. It's not always readily apparent, but it is there. Bevel side up to you facing out. Now installed, some kits will come with a new dust seal. Drop that in there and tap it in. One thing I failed to mention is when I pulled the clutch off, Sandins, being that it's not a pressed on clutch, will use a shim. That shim will go there and that's what sets your air gap on your clutch. Go ahead, torque these down. Uh, once again, 23 inch pounds or whatever's tight. Install your clutch, you're ready to go. Once again, this is Bob from Century Auto Air Conditioning. All these parts are available on our website at centuryautoair.com. Thank you.